I've created this video as a precursor to troubleshooting light dimming. In this video, we are going to learn about the hardware first. It's hard to identify what part is broken or not doing what it's supposed to do if you don't even know what it's supposed to be doing in the first place. The main components for light dimming are ballasts. This is where it all starts. A building automation system or BAS, to control the dimmable ballasts. We'll discuss the Novar system in greater detail in a moment. Normally, we'll have a light sensor to measure how much natural sunlight is coming into the space that we are dimming. However, the light sensor is not required for actual dimming. Let's go through each component in detail. Dimmable ballasts. These are not your everyday off-the-shelf ballasts. They are manufactured specifically for dimming and will have the appropriate control wires. The purple and the gray wires are used to control dimming. The black and the white wires are for on-off functionality only. Since we can't dim a light that's turned off, for the purpose of this video, you can assume the lights are on. As long as the lights are on, the purple and the gray wire will have around 10 volts DC on them, with purple being the positive and gray being the negative. Depending on the manufacturer, you may see up to 15 volts DC on these wires. The dimming control range will always be 1 to 10 volts DC when connected to the BAS. As you can see, the voltage actually comes from the ballast, not the BAS. So how do they dim? If you short or touch the purple and the gray wire together, which creates very minimal resistance between the two wires, the lights will go full dim. And if you separate them, which creates a very high level of resistance between the two wires, the lights will go full bright. So low resistance, lights are dim. Max resistance, lights are bright. Through the controls, different levels of resistance are added between the purple and the gray wire to achieve a varying level of light dimming. The DC voltage between the purple and the gray wire are also a representation of how dim or bright the lights are. So if you place your meter across the purple and the gray wire and get 10 volts DC, the lights will be full bright or at 100%. If you get 5 volts DC, the lights are half bright, or at 50%. And if you get 1 volt DC, the lights are almost full dim, or at 10%. As long as the lights are on, you should have at least half a volt DC. The only time it should read zero or no voltage is when the lights are off, or there is an issue with the wiring from the ballast. All the ballasts assigned to dim in a certain zone will be wired in parallel to each other. So all purple wires are connected to each other and all gray wires are connected to each other. So if any time a single purple wire touches a single gray wire, all the lights will go dim. This is the same as a purple wire on one ballast being shorted to ground and a gray wire on another ballast is also shorted to ground. Although this video is not made for actual troubleshooting, that point is paramount to understand. What happens in this situation is, the troubleshooter will find one wire and correct the grounding issue. The lights will go full bright and make them feel that they have fixed the problem. They then plug the lights back into the BAS and they go dim again. It's not because of the BAS, it is because the other wire is still shorted to ground. If any purple or a gray wire get shorted to ground, the lights will remain full bright until they are plugged into the BAS, where at that time they will go full dim and remain full dim until that short is corrected or the ballasts are unplugged from the BAS. Moving on to the light sensor. 
Most of the time the site or building will have skylights or large windows to allow natural sunlight into the building. The light sensor is used to measure how much natural sunlight is coming into the space. The more natural sunlight in the space, the less electrical light required, therefore saving energy, which is the whole purpose of light dimming. Now the light sensor itself does not really perform any actual dimming. It only tells the BAS what the natural light level is in the space, so the BAS can determine how much electrical light is required. The sensor itself is a simple two-wire loop-powered 4 to 20 milliamp sensor. There is a video on the Novar Learning Channel called Terminating a Loop-Powered Analog Sensor to Novar Boards. A quick review. The positive of the sensor is wired to the positive or even number terminal on the IOM or IOM2, the source terminal on the MinIO, or the plus 20V terminal on the XIO modules. The negative or the 4 to 20 milliamp signal from the sensor would wire to the negative or odd numbered terminal on the IOM or IOM2, the terminal labeled input on the MinIO, and the terminal labeled UI on the XIO modules. Reminder for the MinIO. Make sure the input jumper is set to I for 4 to 20 milliamp slash digital. Lastly, the BAS. The equipment used by Novar is the Eclipse light dimming module and either an IOM, an IOM2, a MinIO, or one of the XIO modules. First, the Eclipse. Is the device that's actually connected to the ballast and therefore does the actual light dimming. It receives a signal from one of the mentioned modules, dims the lights in accordance to that signal, then converts the ballast voltage into a control signal back to the module. Let's break that down to each function. First, the signal to the eclipse. The Eclipse has a few options on how it can receive this signal. It can receive a true analog 0 to 10 volt DC signal, or it can receive a pulse width modulation signal. The XIO and the MinIO have analog outputs that output a DC signal from 0 to 10 volt. This will be used to signal the Eclipse to control the electrical light level. The terminal labeled 0 to 10 volt in on the Eclipse will be wired to terminal 22 or 24 on the MinIO, depending on which analog output is controlling the light dimming. The COM terminal on the Eclipse will be wired to terminal 23 on the MinIO. If an XIO module is used, that 0 to 10 volt in terminal on the Eclipse will now be wired to any terminal labeled UI, again depending on which point is controlling light dimming. The COM terminal on the Eclipse will be wired to the COM terminal next to the UI terminal that is just mentioned. Dip switch number one on the Eclipse must be in the on position in order for it to receive a true analog signal. All other switches are to remain in the off position. If an IOM or IOM2 is used, the signal will be a pulse width modulation signal, due to neither module has a true 0 to 10 volt analog output. How this is wired is, a 24 volt AC transformer will be wired to one of the terminals labeled SPTPWM, stands for Set Point Pulse Width Modulation, on the top left of the Eclipse. The other wire of the transformer will be wired to one of the output terminals on the IOM or IOM2. It does not matter if it's wired to an odd numbered terminal or an even numbered terminal. The other terminal on the same output that was not wired from the transformer on the IOM 
will be wired to the Eclipse module on the other terminal labeled SPT PWM input. So when the IOM or IOM2 output closes, the top two terminals in the Eclipse will have 24 VAC. When the output of the IOM or IOM2 is opened, the top two terminals on the Eclipse will not have 24 VAC. The IOM output will open or close at different speeds as a signal to the Eclipse module to control the light dimming. Dip switch number one in the Eclipse must be in the off position for pulse width modulation signal to work. All other switches are to remain in the off position as well. Now that the Eclipse is receiving a signal to dim the lights, how does it actually dim the lights? Well, the purple and the gray wires mentioned earlier on the ballast, they get terminated to the only green connector on the Eclipse on the lower right hand side. Purple must go to the positive terminal and the gray wire must go to the negative side. The Eclipse module simply adds different levels of resistance between the purple and the gray wire until the proper level of electrical light is achieved. Another quick troubleshooting note, if the BAS has the lights dimmed and you want them full bright, simply unplug the green connector. Now I had just mentioned the Eclipse adds resistance between the purple and the gray wire until the proper light level is achieved. Well, how do we know what level it is and when it's achieved? You remember when we were talking about the purple and the gray wires on the ballast having a DC voltage and that that voltage was proportional to the light level? The Eclipse can detect that DC voltage and then converts that to a 4 to 20 milliamp signal back to the IOM, IOM2, the MinIO, or the XIO as an input used as dimmer control. The wiring is as follows. The terminal labeled output FBKMA, which stands for output feedback in milliamps, that gets wired to the negative numbered or the one with a minus symbol above it. Again, the exact number will depend on what input is used on either the IOM or IOM2. The terminal labeled COM on the Eclipse will be wired to terminal 7 on the IOM or terminal 47 on the IOM2. If a MinIO is used, then the output FBKMA terminal is wired to the terminal labeled input on the proper input of the MinIO and the COM on the Eclipse is wired to the COM terminal next to the previously mentioned input terminal. Make sure the input jumper for the MinIO is set to I for 4 to 20 milliamp. If an XIO is used, then the output FBKMA terminal is wired to the terminal labeled UI for the proper input on the XIO. And the COM on the Eclipse is wired to the COM terminal next to the previously mentioned UI terminal. In summary, the light sensor gives the BAS the set point. The analog or pulse output tells the Eclipse how far to dim the lights. That analog output will keep adjusting up or down until the dimmer control input from the Eclipse matches that set point. Be sure to watch light dimming troubleshooting as well as other videos on the Novar Learning Channel.